Shomra Bjog. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sure Look. Sure Listen. The podcast that takes a pop at culture. Sure Look. Sure Listen. 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 A oh, very strong introduction, Ben. A lovely big pause. But sure, look it. We don't have time for any of that because we've got loads of stuff to cover this week, including a number of trailers, one of which is for your favourite prequel sequel series, The Winchesters. Also, Netflix had their Tada event and gave us some trailers to look at from that, which we're going to look at, Ben, but we're not going to name them individually. That'll take too long. Except for Glass Onion, the sequel to your favourite film of last year, um, Knives Out. And there was a new Hellraiser trailer, Benjamin, the sequel to your favourite bedroom activities. And we've also seen bloody She-Hulk. Sure, listen, Michael, if that wasn't enough, we're taking a look at monarchies. <laughs> what are they good for? Absolutely. Uh, we said we weren't going to be biased, so I probably can't finish that lyric, Michael. But we're looking at monarchies in fiction, how we use them as a tool for world building and other such shenanigans. Benjamin, I didn't realise that uh, you were doing a bit there and I thought you'd just gotten sick halfway through that sentence when you said monarchies. <laughs> um, anyway, look, listen. Benjamin, I'll tell you what. It's the first cold day in the tiny room. It, uh, it's, a, it's a cold day all around, Michael. There's a bit, of a, nip of, uh, a bit of a nip of old Jack Frost, Benjamin, as we're coming into October. And one of the big things about coming into October, Ben, is it's content season for the old Americanians. Michael, they're heaping the content in big steaming bowls of stew, just passing big it out to them. Steaming Thanksgiving Halloween bowls of stew where everything's coming and everything's spooky. Benjamin, I can't see. You've gone. Where have you gone? Oh, my, little, my little camera was off. Oh, you're my back. Little... I'm sorry. Oh, I'm you're back. Here. There you are. I'm still there you here. are. Look at you. There's your little spooky Halloween face. Benjamin. <laughs> yes. One of the things that you said to me recently, we were sitting down and we were having a chat and we were talking about your and my favourite show, Supernatural, the Supernatural Boys. The boys. And <laughs> you, said, you said to me, what you said was, I'll tell you what, Mick, what I think was one of the biggest weaknesses of Supernatural was they left too much unsaid. I really wanted to know more about every single intricate detail of every single character's backstory. I wonder if they could do a TV show about that. Now, Michael, <clears throat> I did say that to you. That is that is that is the number one complaint um, on my other podcast, More Chester. Uh, <laughs> when are we going to learn about the parents of Supernatural? Yeah, but Ben, didn't we spend a couple of seasons learning about the parents of Supernatural? Why well, we they spend come back as main characters? <laughs> arguably, too many seasons <laughs> learning about the characters. Uh, Michael, well, this is one of those interesting things, right? Um, go on, go on, go on. Uh, we got a trailer for the Winchesters from the CW this week. It's produced by Jen Snackles. Yeah, yeah, and voiceovered by Jensen Ackles. And, and voiceovered by Jensen Ackles. So this is interesting because Michael, Michael, spoilers. Yeah. Jensen Ackles is dead in the supernatural universe. The actor Jensen Ackles is dead. Yes, they removed him so there wouldn't be any conflict in case he ever ran into Dean Winchester. Very good. Ben, he played the actor Jensen Ackles in one episode, didn't he? He did, At least yeah. one episode. They had, they had like three meta episodes where the lads found themselves transported to the earth where they are, in fact, actors playing hunters on TV. Yeah, yeah, very good stuff, very meta. Ben, yes. it's... Yeah, he's in heaven, isn't he? He's up, at the, he's up there in heaven. I, I guess he's telling a little story, which which begs the question, Michael, why isn't Jeffrey Dean Morgan telling <laughs> the story yeah. of him and his wife? Or why isn't his wife, whose name escapes me, telling the story Mary. of her and her husband, Mary? Yeah, so yeah, uh, it's very interesting, Michael. It, number one thing that struck me is, are they going to shoot it in this strange yellow sepia tone for the whole fucking series? When is it set, Ben? 70s, when is I think. it set? Is it Just, set in the 70s? Because there's, there's, there's a little snippet of Nam. Oh, yeah, it's post-Nam. So, yeah, I suppose it'll be 70s or there's, early 80s, yeah, maybe. There's a little snippet of Nam. But weren't the weren't the Winchester boys born in the early 80s? In the Nam, yes. Oh, um, the, the Winchester boys were born in Nam. They grew up in the 80s, which means they were possibly, Michael, born in the 70s. Uh, ben, there's no way that they can make more than two or three episodes of this and not start massively contradicting their own story. Uh, it's, it's the other thing, Michael, that draws this back, or the other thing that wrecks this as a concept is, we know what's going to happen. 
Yeah, yeah. Mary's going to die. <laughs> and then come back 10 years later, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. I gave up on it, Michael. <laughs> But, but like you can't, you can't throw a stone without hitting a, a prequel series these days. But why? This isn't a good prequel series. I don't know if there's ever been a good prequel series. I don't get humanity's obsession with prequel series, Ben. We got, we got to know the juice, Michael. We got to know the sources. Hmm. Because there's two big prequel series on TV at the moment. There's obviously Game of Thrones: House of the Dragon. Yes. Which, which has the advantage of being a prequel series set a couple of hundred years before. So you can pretty much do whatever. And they never really delved too much, Michael, into the history of that world, apart from saying that, oh, he was mad. <laughs> he was mad and everyone was having sex with their brothers and sisters. It was grand. And that's fine, because we just chucked yeah, that in every once in a while anyway. Yeah. That's fine. I watched, I, watched a lot, I watched a lot of programs this week, Ben, about incest, but... um. It's, it seems to be a big theme in Rick and Morty as well. Yeah, anyway. I, I've, I've also watched Rick and Morty this week, Michael. Um, we should probably put that on the running order because we didn't. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to it, Ben. But um, what was I saying? Oh, Cassie and Andor. Andor is also on. <laughs> Too many prequels spoiled the broth, bloody, Michael. Another prequel series about a man who's going to die quite soon. Yeah, this is so this is the point of diminishing returns is, you know, those characters are always eliminated in... In in the series that we've come to know them in originally, the the sequel series. The, I don't know what you called them. Prequel series. Ben. Prequel no, no, no. Series. The prequel series are fine, but we get to know them in another timeline. Oh, in the, another the original. Yeah, in the original. So and then we know what happens. So you're just there. You're contriving a dangerous situation for Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Mary Winchester. Winchester. John and Mary Winchester and you're there going yeah yeah but it, John can't die for ages yeah yeah and, and Mary doesn't die until Sam and Dean are both born and then Michael on top of that the, the acting looks a bit rough the, some of the lines in that trailer were delivered with very very the CW uh, like one of the come on rookie maybe learn something and I was like mm -hmm. John Winchester was in Nam. he will fuck you up <laughs> he was in Nam, Ben, and they were in the 70s. Why is that man talking like he's a Gen Zer? Why is he saying, I'm dead, which you taught me the other day? Yeah, I did, on, on the Lewis, learning about, <laughs> but I'm dead. Yeah, uh, listen, it's not great stuff, Michael. Um, we're going to have to watch one or two episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I Supernatural, contractually. Come, yeah, contractually obliged to do it on right. a weekly pop culture podcast. If you don't watch at least one or two episodes, Benjamin, you're going to be ousted as leader of the Dean Winchester fan club. More Chester, the podcast yeah, where we yeah, yeah. crave background stories on every single possible character. Jensen Ackles will personally come to your house and take away your canvas jacket. <sighs> oh no, not my canvas jacket. Yeah, yeah. He'll say, give me that back, Ben. You let down the Dean Winchester fan club. Benny, give me the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> You're out. Benjamin, what else are we talking about? I can't see the list anymore. <laughs> We're also talking about Michael. The second thing on our list there is... Da -dum. Oh, da -dum. It was on, Benjamin. Da -dum. Netflix are back. They're doing a big uh, fan event. One of the funny things about this, Ben, is that there's trailers for lots of things, but Netflix have gotten mixed up about what a trailer should be. <laughs> they, yes. They've gotten mixed up. They have. They're just putting out mini documentaries as trailers mini documentaries yeah I hope you're excited about us filming this <laughs> it's mad isn't it it's, what a weird take one of my what favourite lines that you've ever said is Netflix don't know what a trailer is they've gotten mixed up Ben they're just showing little documentaries or like weirdly I, I would call them more curated clips than trailers <laughs> yeah they're little they're little, little glimpses yeah, so the first one, Ben, that I saw was the the second trailer, trailer in inverted commas, for The School for Good and Evil. Which, oh, God. Oh, it just looks appalling. It, it's just incredibly bad. I, I'm so excited to see it, Ben. I really am. You can't I'm wait so for, the, excited to see it. <laughs> for the low quality poorness of it to come into your life. Oh, I really am very excited. But I suppose the biggest announcement was that they're making Extraction 2. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth is a tough guy. Yeah, John Extraction. That's it, yeah, in India. Yeah, he's in the, the subcontinent. Jo John Wick goes on holiday. Yeah, um, 
And, you know, it wasn't much, it wasn't a trailer by any stretch of imagination because they just said, look, we're doing helicopters and we're doing trucks. Michael, you know, I, I, I remember enjoying Extraction. I, mm. I don't remember ever feeling that I'd like to see more of Extraction. Yeah, Extraction 2. Uh, this time it's premolars. Benjamin. <laughs> Yes. It's, yeah, it's very, it's very strange because they, the, the original film was very clearly written for him to die at the end. And very. then they went, nah, just, just have him wash up and be grand. Do a classic, do a classic Bourne. Yeah, he's just, he's under Jason Bourne, he's washed up at the end and he's grand mostly. Mostly. He'll have a little scar in the sequel, little, little, an aesthetically pleasing scar above his cheek. Yeah. A little sexy scar for a sexy little Chris Hemsworth. The other one that I don't really have much more to say on that, do you? On Extraction 2? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> extraction 2, bloody, uh, bloody root canal. Taking then, money from your wallet. Just give it to Chris Hemsworth. The other one that's coming out is, uh, and they did practically the exact same trailer, is Gal Gadot is a Lady James Bond. A Lady Bond, a Londe. What's it called? I, Hearts I, of Stone? Hearts of Steel? I don't know. It's got it's got a very it's got a very uh, bargain basement romance novel title. <laughs> I can't it does remember. a little bit. What's she in? Heart of Stone. I was right. It was Heart, Heart of Stone. Heart of Stone was... is straight out of the what is it the the Boons and Mills <laughs> section? Mills and, at Eason. Mills and Boone? Is that it? Mills and Boone. Yeah, that's it. It's the stuff that you're. Your granny used to buy when she fancied a flutter. <laughs> She'd be like, "Oh, it's got, it's got your favorite Jamie Dorn in it." Yeah, Jamie Dorn is not my favorite Michael um, at all. But uh, yes, he's he's what's there. What's your uh, what's your beef with Jamie Dornan? I've got no beef with Jamie Dornan. Just not my favorite. Is it because he wouldn't join the Dean Winchester fan club? Yeah, look, he thinks he's better than Supernatural or something. Um, yeah. Look, the email said, no, fuck off, you weirdo. But we all know that right. he's just a Dean hater. Yeah, yeah. I, I and uh, that's yeah. the issue here. He's a Dean hater. Benjamin, this doesn't look great either. It's it's exactly the same film as Extraction 2, but in the dark and with a lady. Michael, 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 I came up with a joke uh, that oh, I wanted to do for the previous joke. bit there. So... All we, right. we, we could say <laughs> we could say very professional Ben All we right, could say on. that Jamie Dornan isn't an acolyte get it what Jensen no. Ackles acolyte oh very it's good, good isn't is it? that what yeah. your yeah. what your Jensen Ackles fan clubs are called yeah you can go back to your previous thing now I'm good I got my joke I don't, I don't remember I, I don't know the hearts of stone uh, there's a, there's a, no there's another thing Michael you said there's another thing on the on the da -dum roster Oh, that's another thing. The the most exciting thing. There, I'm sure there's loads more, Ben. But I mean, it was all. It's all just. <laughs> look what we're working on. We're gonna make this. We promise. It's gonna and then be three of them will be cancelled before they're ever released. But the one big get for Netflix, and the one exciting thing I thought was the trailer for the film. Oh, it's an onion. Oh, oh it's an onion. What? What? What substance can it be made out of that makes it the worst possible thing? Glass onion. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a glimpse onion. behind the curtain there of um, of the wonderful world of podcasting with Mick. Is If Mick doesn't know the name of something, he will call it, ooh. Let's take a stab at it. <laughs> and then whatever the thing is. Benjamin, did you have a look at the trailer for Glass Onion? Oh, Michael. Um, yeah, so Glass Onion's coming out. Yeah, yes, it did. That's Michael, pretty much all I have to say about it, too. Okay. <laughs> Benoit Blanc is back, Michael. It, it looks like they've given Ryan Johnson a much bigger budget this time. Oh, go on. Well, it's, it's set in different locations this time, not just a big old house. Oh... Yeah, so there's a few different things happening there, um, and that makes it pretty interesting. Uh, bloody big cast, Michael. Go on. There's a Catherine Han. Oh, one of your favourites, Catherine yeah, Han. Absolutely, nom nom nom. Um, there's bloody <laughs> Dave Batista. <laughs> oh, one of your other favourites, Dave Batista. Also, uh, no, it's probably not a nom nom nom. Let's be honest. Okay, yeah, he's got a very small head. He's got a very small head, um, but very big bod. Yeah, big, huge body, very tiny little head. Daniel Craig's back as the weird 
Southern New Orleans fella. Your favourite detective of recent times, Ben? Benoit Blanc. Very, very good, Michael. Very, very good. Um, the, the, the original wasn't a Netflix thing, was it? No, the original was a big studio release as, as far as yeah, I know. Yeah, is this coming out in cinemas or is this just coming out on Netflix? Um, I, great question. I mean, arguably it should come out on in the cinema because it's, it's a very good cinematic experience. But well, the first one was. We don't know about the second one. Well, we don't know yet. Kate Hudson's in it for some reason, Michael. She um, might be doing a bit of acting, is she? She's probably, yeah, she does that sometimes. That's no good actor Kate it. Hudson will be acting as it turns out she's oh, yeah. not she's not murdering people and then in a mystery um, oh yeah that, that would be good wouldn't it yeah that would be interesting turns out it's a docuseries um, docuseries about that murder that Kate Hudson did <laughs> but when Kate Hudson went around murdering people with a glass onion um, yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah <laughs> that'd be real good uh, it it could be good Michael I, I will personally miss the presence of Anna de Armas um, she was kind of the glue for the first one I think People forget, Benoit Blanc is not a central figure in that series at all. The film, you mean? In the uh, Sorry, in that film at all. And uh, are they going to give Daniel Craig more focus this time? Should they? Will that ruin the magic of the first one? I don't know. He He's a Poirot, Ben. He's a Poirot-esque ca- character. He's yeah, a, but he's just a, he's he's just an avatar for the audience, Michael. He's going, I bloody know who did it. I've known the whole time. I've always known, but I let you drag the arse out of this. And two more people died because of my inaction. But God, was it exciting. (laughs) For the audience. (laughs) I had this figured out within the first ten minutes. (laughs) I probably should have told you. I didn't tell you, though. That's on me, but, Benoit Blanc. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm kind of complicit in all this now, really. <laughs> the Glass Onion is actually a yearly detective award for the most negligible detective. <laughs> and yeah. it's Benoit Blanc. <laughs> because he the made so many this people year's, cry. The winner of this year's Glass Onion for most ineffective detective is Benoit Blanc. <laughs> Benjamin, what are we talking about? What else? What else is going on? You have the list. I, I might do the whole podcast in that fucking voice now. <laughs> do, yeah, do. People will love that. Yeah, they'll, they'll go real well for us. The views will be up. Everyone uh, will love it. <laughs> <laughs> the other things that we're talking about today, Michael, are... <clears throat> excuse me. What we got outside of uh, the dumb universe was mm. Hellraiser. It's back, baby. <gasps> One of your favourites, Ben. No. Again, not the case, but nice yeah, try. Yeah. You and Jamie Dornan sitting in on a Saturday evening, and you go, <laughs> oh, what we do, Jamie Dornan? And he says, oh, I tell you what, Ben, we'll throw on Hellraiser. <laughs> and you go, very good, Jamie. I'll put on my harness. You put on your mask, and we'll watch Hellraiser together. And he says, no, 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 I meant the movie, Ben. And I'll go, oh, oh, no. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. No, it's one of his favourites. Benjamin. Have you seen the original Hellraiser film? Yes, I have, actually. And did you enjoy it? Uh, no, not really. Much. It's the it's the exact type of horror that I just don't get. Um, scary horror. Scary. It, it's it's not even that, Michael, right? Now, Michael, it's, it's no lie, if you're familiar with the lore of this podcast, that you are the man who got me into cosmic horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jamie Dornan is the man who got me into leather. <laughs> Very good. I'm going to edit out me talking over that joke because that's one of the best jokes you've ever done. (laughs) Anyway, it's no secret that you got me into cosmic horror. Yeah. And that I understand. There's an unnerving quality to it. It's uh, it's uncomfortable. It's just like, oh, Jesus, that's real weird. But the thing about um, Hellraiser and Pinhead and the Cenobite lads is Mm. they're not necessarily existential in any sense. They're just a big bunch of pricks. No, oh, they're pricks, Ben. Here's the thing, though. The first film, they're not really pricks. No, they're disciples of a strange religion. Yeah, well, Benjamin, you and I are taking a bit of a look recently for upcoming uh, projects at some Dungeons & Dragons. Yes, at, at some Dungeons & Dragons. That's just we're, we're taking a look at some Dungeons & Dragons, Ben. And the Cenobites of the first film and the book, Ben, would be, like, truly not evil they're not chaotic evil they're not Mm. the usual baddies they're they're kind of neutral they seem to be like 
they're not out to get you. They're like, come on over here and we'll show you this cool stuff. And you're like, oh, is it really cool? And they're like, oh, so cool. And then they, you go over and they take your skin off and replace it with hooks. And you're like, oh, this is less cool than I thought. And yeah. they're like, we think it's cool, though. Yeah, but they're you not- see, <laughs> cool is subjective, pal. Exactly. But they're not like, ah, we got him. We tricked Colopy into giving us his skin. They're like, they think they're doing you a solid. And they, they think they're doing you a favour. They have such wonders to show us, Michael. Yeah, they're like, we have such wonders to show. That's where that line comes from. We have such such yes. wonders to show you. And they mean it, Michael. They're like, yeah, things are good here. And they're, yeah, exactly. And they're not just lepping out at you and getting you. They're, they're sending you a puzzle and saying, you, you have to really want this if you're going to get it. You got to work, is, girl. You got to work, uh, bitch, I think is the original. Yeah, you better, it's from, you better work, bitch. We both butchered a modern contemporary TikTok phrase, but yeah. Uh, what? It's you better work, bitch. That's not a contemporary TikTok phrase. That's a Britney Spears song. Get out of here. It is a contemporary TikTok phrase, Michael. You will stay out of this. It's a Britney Spears song from 15 years ago. Benjamin, She's that's a the Cenobite. Do you know that? It's what? She's a Cenobite. Do you know that? It's a Britney Spears is a Cenobite. Spears, famous yeah. Cenobite. Yeah. I'm Benjamin, a Cenobite the- for you. <laughs> it's the whole thing. I think you picked the wrong song that would work unchanged. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the only Britney Spears song that would work unchanged and you changed it. One of the ones that would have been better would Flay Me Baby One More Time. Would have been a, That would, would work, yeah, good. yeah. That would, that would yeah, have been yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or the, the famous Christina Aguilera song. I'm a Cenobite in a Lament Configuration, baby. You gotta um, rub me the right way. Or the other Britney Spears classic, Oops, I Skinned You Again. Um, Very good, Benjamin. In later films... <laughs> The feckin' Cenobites are lapping out and just getting you. And they yeah. become kind of boring-ass slashers. But in those early films, they're not. They're like, come over here and join us. You don't need any skin. It'll be great. Yeah. Clive Barker was a big bloody weirdo, wasn't he? Clive Barker is... Is Clive Barker dead? Uh, he was in the... He was mentioned in the trailer. Like, it was Master of Horror Clive Barker. Um, yeah, yeah. He is a Master of Horror. I think there's some incest horror in Clive Barker, too, for some reason. That's just... Oh, seems for to fuck's sake. What is it with people doing that, man? Um, I don't know if it is. I don't know oh, if it he's is still alive. Horror. He's 69 I'm... years old. <laughs> the Cenobites would like that, Ben. Yeah, the Cenobites probably would like that, Michael. Um, yeah, I mean, the original Hellraiser is it's real interesting because in the original Hellraiser it's got it's got the original yes. Hellraiser is so fucking weird Michael because it doesn't belong weird. when we when we think about Pinhead in later series he's you know running around a city or tricking people in like fancy New York apartments in the first one it's set in a house Just you know, a gaff, yeah. in a weird old house and it's a woman who's trying to rebuild her lover mm. in a weird way um, and there's lots of eating and cannibalism and oh, it's very strange. Yeah, it's much more gross and much less uh, someone's going to let out and get you and do a quip. Yeah, there's no huge lore to it in the original, Michael. It's just, oh, weird things are happening in this weird house. Oh, my. But look, sure, listen, Ben, in in, in the later films, he, he gets, he's running around, he's tricking people, he's doing quips. He becomes very Freddy Krueger-esque. Yeah, he does. Such as the kind of habit of creepy monsters eventually becoming cool almost he almost becomes the protagonist rather than the antagonist yeah they give him a backstory they give him a prequel <laughs> they give him a there are prequel. prequels yeah they go to space which is one of the best things that can happen to uh creepy <laughs> that's, space that's villains. how you know that's how you know you're doing well that's how you know you're doing well when you end up in space chasing in space uh predators in space <laughs> Hellraiser's in space. <laughs> Hellraiser's in space. It's a, it's a real win. I'm surprised there wasn't a Freddy in space, Ben. Ben, what were your thoughts on the on the, on the the Pinhead being a lady this time? Michael, I, I can literally think of no instance where it is of less importance what gender the weird spooky monster is. Yeah, probably chop the bits off anyway. The only, yeah, exactly. They're bloody, they're, they're destroyed people. Like it's not, do you know what I mean? It's it's irrelevant to the plot, whether it's a man or a woman. The only thing that I found kind of weird is, and we discussed it a little bit before this podcast, Michael, in the original Hellraiser, the, the voice, the famous kind of, we have such wonders to show, the weird, deep, oogly boogly voice, is the mm. actor's original voice. 
he's not doing any sort of post-production. He's just a weird oogly boogly man. That's what he does. He just has a weird, deep, creepy voice when he wants to. But in this, they very clearly have a filter over a young lady. <laughs> it's mm. like, ah. Benjamin, I, I think I saw this on the internet somewhere this week, maybe hated Twitter. But in the original Clive Barker novel, one of your favourites, you and Jamie Dornan, and you sit around reading it to each other every Friday night. Yeah. Is um, the, the voice is described as quite feminine. Oh. So probably better. Probably, probably more book accurate, Michael. Book accurate, one of the most important things. What else are we talking about this week? <laughs> what else There's are we no talking segues. about this week? No, There's no just, segues. Just one thing to the next. There's just aggressive shouting this week. We've replaced segues with aggressive shouting. Michael, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a segue just for old time's sake. Speaking of strange existential punishments, imagine if you were immortal and you got married loads and then you had to get divorced. Oh, you're talking about She Hulk, Ben. She Hulk episode six. We've lost our way. We've 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 lost our What even is this? <laughs> what even are any of us doing here? Just throw shit at the wall and hope some of it sticks. Uh, Michael, I have to say, thus far, this is the most disappointing episode I've watched. Absolute, complete, and utter nonsense. Dreadful stuff. Ah, uh, it was it was a real it was a real and it was a real violent drop off for me. I was like, whoa, no, what, what's happened? And I, Benjamin absolute appalling stuff I, I think they tried to make light of it as well because she's like yes it's a wedding episode but they're always inconvenient and they're always in the middle of the season I'm like if you know they're awful and inconvenient why are you putting this in here mm. well she says at the start Benjamin I know what do you, I know this is the worst possible time to have a wedding episode that's things it are yeah just starting to, I'm like what do you mean things are starting to get going what's getting going is something getting going I think that's in reference to the daredevil helmet that we saw in the previous week's episode I don't I don't know if it was even, to be honest. I th I don't think, I think these were shot and filmed almost like a sitcom where you could you could watch them in any order and it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. But then they do have some threads running through them. It's, it's a, uh, Benjamin. I have to say, I I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's just it's not very good. The episode or the season. The the season. Oh, I'm starting to worry. Oh no, Michael. It's a. Uh, uh, but this episode in particular is just. Yeah, uh, written written seems to be a strong word for what's happened to it. I can honestly say the 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 very interesting thing here, Michael, is you you couldn't possibly say that this is this has an agenda. This episode because everybody in this episode is fairly fucking awful. <laughs> everybody's awful. Well, everybody's awful, but they're depicted in different. Like Jennifer is awful. In this episode, yes, she's trying to make it all yeah. about herself, and she's very selfish. Yeah, know? she. But the guy who shows up at the wedding and starts chatting to her is just the most perfect man in the world. And I was like, he's going to turn out to be a plant from the baddies, or something from Titania sent him, or no, he's just the world's most perfect man. He's just a lovely bloke. He's just the world's most perfect man. But everything in this episode goes nowhere. Like the whole the whole wedding thing, she shows up and they ask her to do the cleaning and they ask her to do the ironing. That's neither a plot point nor a joke. But yeah, yeah, but I'm like, is it just, I couldn't understand that at all. Like, are they just bullying Jen? What, what, why? Yeah, <laughs> don't know. Don't know. It doesn't. It 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 becomes neither. Like I said, neither a plot point nor a joke. It doesn't have a punchline, and it doesn't have a reveal. There's there's nothing. Yeah. There's no setup. There's no payoff. There's no, no, there's nothing. Nothing. It's just like someone is like sitting in the writers' room, going, "Oh, isn't it terrible when they make you do things at a wedding? Let's put that in." Yeah. Is is the, it though? Um, the very the, fact the, as well. One, sorry. The sogeny is trying to get out. Like it's just like, oh. let him out, Ben. Let I'm out, not him out. I'm not him out. But I'm like, I don't know who in the writers' room was like, yeah, this is relatable. This is relatable. Everyone has a terrible <laughs> time at weddings. I don't know if somebody's. I, I don't know if somebody had just been to their ex's wedding or somebody had just broken up with their partner. But someone in that writers' room had an axe to grind. <laughs> they were just well, like weddings. I'm fucking show you. But, but nothing happens. She doesn't get. There's no comedy payoff to it. There's no dramatic payoff to it. She just goes to the wedding and people are mean to her, and that's it. That's the joke. Titania is the greatest waste of a character in this that I've ever seen. Like, what is going on there? <laughs> she just shows up and pretends that she's not there to cause a scene and then causes a scene and leaves. And leaves? 
And that's it. That's the that's it. That's the comedy through line of it. Also, like nothing is resolved between as in there's no fight between She-Hulk and Titania. Titania leaves because she breaks her own face. She breaks her own face because she slips. What the fuck, man? <laughs> it's, it's absolutely bonkers. Um even the the fact that the wedding, the actual ceremony of the wedding happens off screen. They yeah, either, we just never to, even get to see that. It's, and I mean, it's, it's you don't necessarily need to because it's not about the wedding. But you know, storytelling sense. I didn't realize the ceremony had happened. Yeah, I I thought it was still the lead up because it's in the exact same location and nobody's it's in the same changed. location. At the same time of day, everyone's looks the same. Jennifer's drunk now, but she's still, her clothes and hair and all are still the same. It's weird. Oh, it's weird, man. It's so amateurish. It's, it's like a, it's like a skit that we would make. And someone would say, what about continuity? And we go, we don't have time or budget to worry about continuity. Yeah, but for us, it actually doesn't matter. For them, it kind of does. <laughs> it's bonkers. It's weird. It's really, really weird. Um, um. The other one is the fucking the B plot this week was bizarre. I kind of enjoyed Mister Immortal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It just wasn't very. It, do you know what? It it really it did neither men nor women any favors. <laughs> no, um, or lawyers, or it was written by someone who doesn't understand men, women, or the law, or the law. Like it just it like. I, it's one of those classic kind of weird tropes where a TV is like, oh, lawyers are here to help you agree on things. It's like, that's not what lawyers do. Lawyers don't make deals with with people in big boardrooms. That's mm. that's not what's happening here. They can if they want. <laughs> they can if they want, but they're not making a big seven-way divorce deal. Bonkers stuff. Um, and I think it was the laziest way of introducing the intelligentsia, which is just Reddit for sodges. Which I think is just Reddit, but, you know. I take that, Reddit. Um, but yeah, so it turns out there's a cabal of men trying to kill She-Hulk because she's a woman? <laughs> because she's a woman, yeah. Is that it? Is that it? I think it might be. It might be. It, oh, fucking hell, Ben. It's, it's just incredible stuff. And the whole, they give a little speech about don't feed the trolls. Like, th these are all just online trolls. And if you react to them, then that gives them what they want. As they're writing an entire episode about that. Ah. Uh, listen. The, the whole thing is just troll bait, Ben. The whole thing is to upset. The, there, I mean, undeniably, there are trolls in the world. Yeah. And undeniably, probably more of them are men than women. To say that there are no women trolls is definitely wrong. But also, undeniably, more of them are children fucking about than actual real adults. Yeah. So this this um this show seems to have taken both for its villain in the show and its real world villain that it's battling against a uh, uh, baddies that are mostly imaginary straw straw trolls so to speak basically yeah cuz it seems to be ma mainly arguing with 12 year old boys who have the advantage of anonymity to say things that 12 year old boys find shocking and then the small number of dysfunctional adults who can't see that or enjoy stoking it i think it's probably a sizable number of dysfunctional adults but and it, that does it's irrelevant i understand the point that you're trying to make this is so this has become the defining the defining characteristic of these marvel tv shows for me michael is they start off so well okay like i was genuinely in from the first three episodes, I was like, yeah, this is a nice change of pace. This is interesting. I had the same reaction to Moon Knight. I had the same reaction to whatever came before that Hawkeye. They have no mid-season stamina. <laughs> yeah, very, it's very so weak. Stuff. Oh, um, it's, un it's incredible. And I now understand what you were saying. I didn't really understand it the first couple of episodes that we watched where you were like, this is really being politicked at and I was like is it it's, I mean I think it's just a different take and I think it's a different perspective and I think it's a woman's but no it's very much being politicked at it's it's very strange yeah it's yeah a very look I'm gonna watch every episode of it I'm still oh we're gonna finish it out Michael I'm still there's a good few episodes left to go is there but how Jesus, many that was a slow I think it's nine this season so there's oh, three, three more, more at least Daredevil might be good <laughs> 
<laughs> Benjamin, I'm telling you, this is going to be it. This is going to be the showdown. This is this is going to be Marvel's own culture war, which it has created itself. <laughs> it's a, it's a straw enemy again. <laughs> it's this going to create. This is going to be the tipping point. Is how do they handle Daredevil, and if they if they mock Daredevil or talk down to him, it's going to be. There's going to be war. You'll be and the first man on the sodgy cornflakes, Mike. I'll be the first man on the, the Reddit going, what is happening here? But Benjamin, if they do that, they're going to do that knowing that's the reaction that they're going to get. Yeah. And getting that, re it's the it's the writing equivalent of, I'm not touching you, you can't get mad. Oh, doing that's, yeah, that's exactly what it is. They're doing things that they know are going to upset people and saying, if you get upset by this, it's because you're a misogynist. It's like, yeah, but I mean, you don't have to go out of your way to upset misogynists. You, you don't have to poke a bear. It's, it's, yeah, not, yeah. it's not a good idea. I mean, you can right. if you're right. There's no, de there's no denying in the world that misogyny is bad and people whose whole identity revolves around misogyny are not good eggs. Not great. But, yeah, yeah, but you don't have to aim your show at them. No. <laughs> like, no. Oh. There's also a hint, uh, look Ben, we've talked about this before, but it's, it's also a kind of, there's a hint of it of bringing back nerds are bad. But, because being a nerd is cool now. We need a, a worse kind of nerd to be the bad nerds. So now you got a soggy nerd. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, bring it back, in, come back with, anyway, look, what are we talking about? Let's move on. Let's move on. That's enough, uh, that's enough negativity in our lives. I mean, speaking of institutions that don't really know where they're going, um, do you know what's, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's fairly useless? The concept of monarchy probably is what you're going with. Michael, you've actually hit the nail on the head there. That's amazing. It is the concept of monarchy, and that's what I want to speak about this week. Oh, very good. Apropos of anything, Ben. Uh, well, uh, I don't think there was any major world event that happened uh, that was irrelevant to a large majority of the planet, but for some reason was blown out of proportion and made to feel relevant to a majority of the planet. Mm -hmm. the passing of a, a figurehead, I suppose, a... Uh, a person who who really didn't wield that much power, but seems to have been positioned to appear so. And uh, you know, nothing like that. Oh no! Wait, 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 wait. Go on. Liz kicked the bucket. Oh, I thought you meant Black Bolt when he died in um... <laughs> Black Nar Boltigan. Black Agar Boltigan when he died in Mountains of Madness or whatever that was called. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what that was called. Um, weird slash fiction brought to life the movie um, mm. no Michael this week we're looking at Monarchies to Sposs um, and uh, that's a little riff on our classic Irishman's to Sposs Michael we're looking at uh, bloody monarchies in fiction and how we use them as a world building device or how they kind of don't really sit well with certain audiences around the globe mm. for example Benjamin it, it would be it would be remiss of us to talk about monarchy in fiction without mentioning that we are both living on the island of Ireland and to varying degrees Republican. You're a staunch Republican, Ben. You have a tattoo of um, Michael Collins on your butt. Yes, I do. And you, you know, you, you, um, you wake up every morning and you say a prayer to the treaty. No, not the treaty. You're against the treaty. You say a, clear, a <laughs> prayer to the Irish Declaration of Independence. You're mixing up your history there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, well, I mean, it doesn't matter to me, but clearly it does to you. Um, and then you, uh, I can't believe you got it wrong, and I still got it in the throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Foolishness. Um, oh, but Benjamin, yeah, we're. I, I would. I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Benjamin. That's for Jamie Dornan. But we here are staunch anti. Anti-monarchists at the podcast. I don't think we're staunch anti-monarchists, Michael. We're just seriously unfazed anti-monarchists. It's just like, why? Why is yeah, this yeah, happening? I, mean, we're not, I, I think, yeah, I think we have the luxury of not having to be anti-monarchists because we don't live in a monarchy. Yeah, that's that, you, we, there's nothing for us to rage against, Michael. Uh, uh, you know, as, as, as two Irish men, we have a phrase that's been specifically designed for this occasion, and that is the fact that they are at it again. Um, <laughs> and whenever we whenever we run up against something that's just utterly ridiculous, especially from our neighbours, we just turn around and say, ah, well, you know yourself, eh, we're mm. at it again. And then someone will take out a fiddle and they'll play a, a, a wee tune while we all have a drink yeah. and say, yeah. ah, it was a terrible we'll time around down in old County Down. 
And, we'll put yeah. on our kilts. We, you put on our kilts. We'll have a potato sandwich and we'll have a good old rebellion. And then we'll Benjamin. probably chase a haggis. Oh, no, it's the other Celts. Never mind. That's the other lads. Benjamin. Yes. The thing is, so we 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 both live in Ireland, famously Benjamin a Republic. Yes. Um, and here's a question for you though. Yeah. What would how would you feel, Benjamin, if some haggerty old hobo came out of living in the the forests and said, actually, my great 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 granddad was king, so I should be king now. Would you be going, oh, great, let's get the crown on this for straight away and reorganize our entire society? Or would you be saying, hold on a minute, Aragorn, <laughs> we haven't got time for this? Uh, sorry, we've actually, uh, we've just gotten rid of one mad king. Um, we are probably going to maybe take a break from the monarchy. Um, Denethor wasn't king. Uh, oh, sorry, we've just gotten rid of one mad steward with too much power. Yes, very good. <laughs> um, how about we just don't? Mm? Yeah, 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 mm? yeah. No, there was no, but that, so Ben, we're talking about Lord of the Rings, and yeah. Lord of the Rings is a fantastic example of, Lord of the Rings was written by a royalist. Yes. J or or Tolkien, the second or is for royalist. J James really royalist Tolkien. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Benjamin, he, uh, it's a work of fiction, obviously, and it's a very good work of fiction, and it doesn't, it the, the royalist aspects of it and the lineage aspects of it and the kind of deference to genetic right to rule. Oh, uh, boo. It doesn't ruin it for me, but it is my biggest issue with the Lord of the Rings. It is the one that leaves a little bit of a smack of, of a sour lemon at the back of your throat. Though. You're just like, mm, mm. Little bit. Like, instead of, instead of waiting for Aragorn to come back, why don't they just get rid of Aragorn, get rid of Denethor and have a vote? Have, have a, a big old vote. Have a good old fashioned vote. Yeah, probably because some evil servants of Sauron would have won the vote. Yeah, I mean, he would have gotten the populist vote. He would have slipped on in there with some... With some <laughs> uh, I, I don't like this ivory tower that they've built. Uh, you should vote for me and my big steel tower. Um, yeah, vote for me. I'll give everyone lower taxes and we'll have more Sauron. Yeah, no. more death. What was that last part? Nothing. Less taxes. Um, but yeah... Lord of the Rings is kind of that prime example, isn't it? Where you just look at it and go, oh, this is all a bit silly. This is all, this is all. Once you actually delve into those systems, like, who picked you to be in charge? Why, where are you getting this? Why are you? Well, Ben, the, the thing about James really royal token is that he did come up with a reason for every single king. Oh, go on. And it all, like, it goes back generations after generations after generations and to great heroes and to semi-mythical mythical beings who were immortal god rulers. Bloodlines, so they... to speak. Bloodlines. It's all bloodlines. It's all it's bloodlines. All bloodlines. Oh, God. So, Ben, I can't remember the exact ins and outs of it, but Aragorn is a descendant of the first. Oh, he's a descendant of Elendil and Isildur. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know who Elendil and Isildur are? I don't are? know. I'm, I'm, I'm here for it though, uh, Michael. You tell me. Uh, so, do uh, you really not know who Elendil and Isildur are? I know are. Isildur so, is the previous king, the, the last great king of Gondor before Aragorn, and he's the one who takes down Sauron. Well, yeah, him and Elendil, his father. Um, ah, fight, okay. So it's fight the pair of the minute. And Isildur is uh, not great because he gets corrupted by the ring quite easily. He does. He gets. He gets. He gets an old. He gets an old. He, he, bu he bought the Andrew Tate twelve part series. Um, exactly. Give it a listen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get that joke. All Can right, it's because you're old. It's okay. Just keep going. <laughs> no, hold on a second. Fuck you, first of all. But second of all. <laughs> Well, tell me, explain the joke to me. I want to know. What Andrew I mean. Tate is a noted misogynist um, who rose to prominence on TikTok, and he had a little academy where he basically promoted misogynist things, and you can oh, buy good. into his course. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and is that does um, that compete with your one? And he's been no, mine's a little bit different. Mine's done very subtly. His was very overt. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, mine mine pretends to be uh, a Winchester fan cast. Um, yeah, yeah, and just subtly <laughs> radicalizes young men. <laughs> anyway, Benjamin, he gets shot by arrows in a river. But, um, <laughs> but uh, Aragorn, Andrew Tate. Benjamin, uh, no, not Andrew Tate. <laughs> uh, Isildur, Isildur, he gets shot by arrows in a river. Ben, he drops the ring. It's disastrous. But uh, um, Aragorn is from that line, Benjamin. Yeah, the line of the great kings of Numenor. 
Ah, classic. Yeah, yeah. So he's better than normal people, you see. Ah, right. I forgot. Sorry. But I, I mean, in the world of Lord of the Rings, I mean, you could make an argument in the world of Lord of the Rings that he actually is better than normal people. Yeah, because, because it's a mythical universe. <laughs> It's a mythical universe and people who have royal blood actually do have special powers. For example, Benjamin, at the time of Lord of the Rings, Aragorn is 86. Oh, okay. But his, his super inbred blood makes him good. Yeah, super young and sexy, like a young Viggo Mortensen. Okay. Oh. Even though he's 86. All right. What? <laughs> so he'll be, able to, he'll be able to live a really long time and be a real stable king and so on and so forth. That's a load of bollocks. Ah, look, Benjamin, that's what they're having. That's that's how they get you. They say, oh, well, no, we've got the magic blood. <laughs> we've got the magic in we. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know if I... Uh, I tell you where that would be a nightmare, Michael. Having magic blood. Uh, having magic blood. Or pretty much anywhere it sounds like a nightmare to have magic blood. But if you had those, like, long, you know, blood-based monarchies where you... Um, you know, didn't really have a choice and it was a right to rule situation and you were basically at the mercy of whatever mad son was born. You know where that'd go really bad, Michael? If you started inbreeding and... Oh! Um, and, Michael, you kind of slowly went mad through various uh, defects of blood diseases um, and personal mm. tragedies. And, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be great, would it, um, to live in Westeros? Oh, you meant Westeros. I thought you meant Great Britain. All right. <laughs> Ah, 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 ah. Uh, very okay, good. Right. Um, uh, Michael, Matt Smith has gone from playing an actual Prince Philip. <laughs> so, Michael, uh, Matt Smith has gone from playing a Prince Philip on Netflix to uh, more of a Prince Andrew on HBO. <laughs> <laughs> um, he seduced his young cousin, Ben. Uh, yeah, and I think he's going to do it again, Michael. Um, I've, been, I've been watching the old um, House of the Dragon, Michael. Mm, very good. And oh, you you wouldn't want you wouldn't want Matt Smith to be a brother. No, no, or your uncle. Or your uncle, <laughs> especially your good. uncle. Yeah, especially your uncle. It's not good, Benjamin. Yeah, there's a lot a lot of incest going on in this. Oh, my God, there's too much. Probably only about as much as actual royal families, but um, but still yeah, a lot, still a lot, a lot of it. Benjamin, again though, in the world of Game of Thrones or Game of Throws, as you say, mm -hmm. um. The people, the kings and queens do actually have legitimate magic blood again. Yeah, because, especially in the case of Targaryens, because they speak to dragons. They speak to dragons that can't be killed by fire, if you remember. Yeah, they like to burn their L hand. You see, you see Paddy Constantine doing it. He's waving his hand over candles yeah, yeah, at yeah. one point. He's like, yeah. oh, look at this. Look at this, I'm immune to fire. Maybe he's not, though. Oh. Oh. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's going like, oh, look, I'm doing a magic trick. Because... Everyone was surprised when Daenerys turned out to be immune to fire. They tried to burn her alive, you'll remember. Oh, I do. I do remember that, yeah. And uh, she killed her own brother with, not necessarily fire, but melted gold. Yeah, so it was a bit different. It's not fire. This is something much worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it seems in the, in the world of Game of Thrones, everybody of the royal lineage doesn't necessarily get the magic blood, maybe. It, it seems to skip generations, because at one point, Michael had said, um, Paddy Constantine turns around and says or Lord what's his name Viserys or I can't remember uh, uh, Vis Viserion find, Valerius they I, all have the same name I find it really hard to keep up with the names in Games of Thrones as it turns out um, this is my first time ever watching Game of Thrones when it's happening as you know I've never watched oh, wow. the actual Game of Thrones um, which is one of my great faults as a pop culture podcast co-host you've never seen Game of Thrones no I've never watched any Game of Thrones but Game of Thrones is all about royalty and monarchs and who's going to be the king. Yes, I know. That's why I'm watching the, the new one, Michael, to find out Are you more. watching the new one? I know all about the lore of the original, Michael, and I've watched lots of YouTube wipe videos and, you know, that, that kind of thing um, so that I can kind of keep up with all the lore. But, Michael, God, it'd be fucking awful if your rulers were just a bunch of children. Mm. They, they're just, they, like... <laughs> One of my favourite things about watching this is that the council knows that Daemon Targaryen is the fucking worst. And he's, they're all like, he's the worst. He's Mathel the is worst. The worst. He's no good. He's Get bad for him. us. He's bad for yeah. morale. He's bad for society. He abuses yeah. power. And then Paddy Constantine's like, ah, he's my brother. Ah, he's my brother. And they're like, keep him away from nieces. Keep him away from nieces and bloody yeah. anyone. Just keep him away from people. Just keep him away from anyone. He's the worst. <laughs> He's the worst. Who gave he'll him probably, a dragon? Says everyone. He'll probably be 
He'll probably be a good king. Uh, he'd be good, wouldn't he? He'll be a, he'll be a worthy successor. Um, and it's it's one of those interesting things. And I guess the people of Westeros don't have much choice but to allow one of is it seven families? Yeah, the seven great houses. They kind of rotate around. But either way, you're just getting a bunch of mental, inbred, power-hungry monsters. Yeah, Ben, you're just describing European history there. I know, it's mental, but that's all George R. R. Martin does. He's like, ah, oh, look at the Borges. They were fucking mad. I'm going to put a dragon. Put a dragon. Put a dragon in it. George Really Royal um, Martin. Oh, Benjamin. Look at that. The Spanish Inquisition. Green fire. Green fire, get them going. Get them going. Fuck's sake. Benjamin, yeah. we were saying earlier that as um, as people who live in a republic, you see, the weird thing about America is, Benjamin, they don't have kings and queens, and they haven't for a lot longer than we haven't. And I think they fetishize it as a result, is it? Yes, exactly, Benjamin. So generally in, in British fiction, obviously, kings and queens tend to be the goodies. Yes. And, you know, the long-awaited return of the king. He's going to come in, Ben. He's going to open two double doors. And everyone's going to go, Oh, thank God, some more good blood is back to show us what to do. Oh, he's back. It's the, it's the pure blood. I, mean I mean, the good blood. <laughs> that, yeah. The, um, and the Americans have a similar thing, which is funny because they probably went all the way back around. Go on. From being anti-royalist and creating a republic. Is it a republic? No, it's not a republic, is it? They're a federation? Uh, is it a... I don't know. I think you're thinking of Star Trek but they and then they went all the uh, way back around to going ah weren't royals great remember when we had royals let's go over to England and see let's go over and see let's go over, let's look go at over that. and see and let's go and gog and now they've gone all the way back around to kind of fetishizing fetishizing royals again and nowhere is that more obvious than in the film Black Panther oh Michael very good very good um, it's not my first podcast Benjamin despite appearances despite appearances Michael one of the interesting things about the two previous properties that we mentioned there is they're not pro-royal in any way you're not supposed to admire the 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 Game of Thrones thing too much like very often Game of Thrones yeah right Get, sorry to cut across you but Game of Thrones yes but Lord of the Rings is very pro. Oh, Lord of the Rings, sorry, yeah, sorry. Lord of the Rings, yes, I meant House of the Dragon and um, oh, Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones. sorry. Um, Lord of the Rings, absolutely, it, it's it's very much aimed towards, look at this, isn't this great? Isn't it good that we have... The king is back, everybody, the king is back, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, Calm your peasant asses down. But you the could say back. one of the, the worthwhile things of something like Game of Thrones, and even to a large extent, The Crown on Netflix, which I'm very against for several reasons. Um, but so uh, one of the things that you could say about Game of Thrones as a universe, and even things like The Crown on Netflix, which I'm very against for several reasons, they're not, they're not careful about how they treat the story of royal families. It is very obvious from Westeros that you shouldn't admire royals. They are dysfunctional people with too much power. Big grossies. And it's very obvious from shows like The Crown on Netflix that terrible things have happened in the royal family. And again, dysfunctional people with too much power. Michael, one of the most egregiously irresponsible narratives of the last couple of years is, what's this? An African family who was born to rule. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That's good. Put them up there. That'll be great. It's all of the benefits of Africa and all of the excitement of royalty. Oh, we love royalty. Oh, we love royalty, Michael. Um, uh, and perhaps it's just us because we're two Irishmen looking at any form of monarchy and going, ew. Uh, gross. But Marvel does not condemn royalty half enough. No, no. They don't condemn it at all in this. In this, it's like, this is the good thing. It leads to one of the most jarring moments of that whole film, Benjamin. Where you have Michael B. Jordan, the prince in exile. Yes. So, I mean, I part of me almost wishes that rather than being of royal royal blood himself, they just went with, he's just a random Wakandan. It, that would have been good. I would have enjoyed that narrative. And if he was just like, I'm going to be Black Panther. And they're like, why should you be Black Panther? You say, because I'm going to fuck you all up. Because <laughs> I'm going to fuck with you. Because um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm the best at being Black Panther. I, I think Watch this shit. I think one of the great flaws there, Michael, is that even even they don't take that too far. You know, Michael Jordan is is essentially an exiled prince, Michael yeah, B. No, Jordan, he is. but yeah. he still has claims to royal blood, and that's why he's allowed to challenge. Mm. Like it's ah, oh. 
and you you even said the, even the cha- even the challenges within the framework of, yeah it yeah, still operates still within all... the system and that's what makes it so dangerous for t'challa because everyone's like oh well he is royal blood so he's allowed to do that and it's like yeah. uh, because T'Challa was just gonna that's the that's one of the things that's brushed over immediately. T'Challa's just like, no, it's it's not a legitimate claim. Fuck this guy. And they're yeah, like and here. they're like, oh good, okay, it's not a legitimate claim. That's a terrible system. Yeah, no one's allowed to system. challenge the king because oh I'm sorry, you're a peasant. That's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish Daniel Kalua's character had just lost the rag and went, That's it. I challenge you and just kick the shit out of him. I'm starting a republic. The like, yeah, I'm starting a republic. Me, Daniel Kalua, the Republic of Kalua. <laughs> I'd, I'd live there. That'd be good. Um, Benjamin. Yeah. So aside from the whole royal thing, and he, he even needs to be royal to mount a challenge, at least he's presenting as anti-monarchy. <laughs> oh, very sorry. Go on. No, no, it's fine. Ben, people have heard dogs before. Just go, just roll. Um, I, I can probably edit her out. Yeah, the the anti-monarchy uh, thing. Oh, it's so interesting, Michael. They couldn't even give him... They, they, they sullied him up. Something terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. They like They're like, oh, he's a violent sush, but he's no good. He's no good. And then I think it kind of had an unattended backlash because everyone was like... Is, is he wrong, though? Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone was like, I think this guy might be right. I, th- I think he's this like, guy's spot on. He's bloody spot on. Now, again, he, he's spot on about, you know, stop being a hermit kingdom and spread your wealth and your resources and your learning with the rest of the world. Um, he's not He's not going there and going, I'm going to take down this monarchy. He wants to be the king of it. Yeah, he wants. he wants to be in the chair. In the throne, mm. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be in the throne and be a more, not beneficial, benevolent yeah. king. I don't think he is. King. I think he's got a, I think he's got a, uh, he's got a plan. He's got a Wakandan supremacy kind of plan. Do, do you know what I mean? I, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was going to say black supremacy, but I don't think he uh, I mean, he kind of does. But he that's, does that's kind of the aim, supremacy. isn't it? It's an Afro supremacy kind of goal. Um, yeah. Which is fair enough, because after God knows how many hundreds of years, you'd just be like, oh, do you know what? Let's try it another way. Let's, let's just fucking... Oh, well, Wakanda's doing all right. Wakanda's doing just fine. But that's where it gets really interesting, Michael. You know, we've seen this before in the Marvel Universe as well. You and I, Michael, way back in the early days of of this podcast, we went with our good friend John. Uh, oh, John. To a cinema. <laughs> and we watched... The Inhumans come to life on our screen. <laughs> One of the worst things any of us have ever seen, Benjamin. <laughs> to this day, Michael. <laughs> to, I would argue that episode six of She-Hulk is about the same quality. Ah, as get out of here. They're not even it is, close. They're not it is, even it's close. A, it's about the same quality as any given episode of Inhumans. But, Michael, again, what we got there was we had the Royals and we had a dissenter and we had someone... Now... Again, it gets really interesting here because so who we have is Blackagar Boltigan, who's who's yeah, Boltigan. the heir apparent, the you know the No, he's he's the king. Sorry, the king apparent. Um <laughs> No the king. The king apparent, the king obvious. No. Um so we have King Obvious um, yeah. and we have Lady Longhair. Yeah, yeah. And we have yeah. an exceptionally um structured case cast system. Um, Very much so, Benjamin. You are going to go, you're going to get your powers. Yeah. And if you get cool powers, you're going to hang about with the royal family. And if you get gross powers, you're down the mines. You're down the mines. So it's a, it's essentially <laughs> South Africa in space. Um, oh, fuck. And it's pretty fucked up, man. Um, so, yeah. It, what we get there is the brother of Black and Garb Aldigan, who doesn't have any overt powers other than being a bit sneaky. Um, yeah, Maximus. It, Maximus. He's like, oh, rise up with me, guys, and we'll start a republic. And We don't need this family. And then again, Michael, all the Irish people are sitting here watching it going, yeah, and? Good lad. <laughs> Good lad. Good lad, Maximus. Good man. Well, fucking Good time. man. Good man. Um, and, but a lot of other people watching this would go, how very dare he? How very dare he? And I think it's I think it's probably people in the UK going nothing wrong with a nothing wrong with a strong leader. 
Nothing wrong. Yeah. Um, Put the grubs down the mine. And there's probably some people in America going, oh, it's great that they have a royal family. It's real nice. And you're just like, <laughs> but, but for a lot of other communities, they're like, fuck this. This fuck. Yeah, Maximus is, Maximus is right there, you know. <laughs> Maximus is on the money. And then again, they have to sully him up and he's a weird sadist and he's got a hair kink. And it, oh, it's uh, fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, basically, they anyone who makes any sort of motion to taking down the monarchy, they have to have them have some sort of gross, violent, possibly misogynistic, or... Is he a little bit rapey in that? He's a little bit I think, rapey. I think there's an implication that he's a bit rapey. It's like, we have to make it clear that this guy's the baddie. Yeah, oh, this guy's no everything he's good. Doing, everything he's doing makes sense, so let's make him also be horrible at the same time. It's a very interesting, like, ideological tool where it's, like, pro-Republican, pro-anti-monarchy, pervert. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get him. Royalist, pure and dignified. Like, it's yeah. not great. Yeah. So you have Black Bolt, handsome, calm, strong leader, loves sending ugly people to the mines. <laughs> to the mines with you. Oh, you've got a bad power, have you? To the mind! <laughs> to the minds with you, boy. It's fucking yeah, well, awful. He doesn't say it, obviously, because he can't talk or else everything explodes. Yeah, and then... <laughs> but his wife, his wife is like, well, my husband thinks you should go to the mines. And I agree. And her husband is like, I didn't say that. You're, you're, you're making these decisions. <laughs> She's the awful one. And Black Girl She's... is like, oh, I would argue with you if it didn't blow your head off in a big hole yeah. in the space station. I I'm going to kill everyone if I say, hold on a minute. We're not sending him to the mines just because he's an uggo, are we? And Maximus is like, you didn't send me to the mines because I'm your brother. This is a bad system. This is just how it works again. It's like everyone around him is like, Maximus is bad. Maximus is not yeah. good. Ah, he's my brother. Yeah, he's like, and Maximus is like, oh, I should really take this system down. But first thing I'm going to do a big load of creepy shit. <laughs> What's that? Your hair? No, 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 no. Mm, oh. Give me a smell of you. Uh, but like a lot of our a lot of our meter Michael is, is built around the return of kings and stuff like that like there is a there is a there is a royal or monarch fetish in a lot of our pop culture you know um, it's always about restoring the the true bloodline back to it and like there's a revelation that the king had a son and he was squirreled away and then mm. the usurper took the throne for however long and now we're back like We've seen that repeat time and time again in books and stuff like that. It's just awful. <laughs> Benjamin, I, uh, we're going to get deep into now weird, weird stuff, but um, you could argue that monarchy was probably a good idea for hundreds of years. Get out of here, Michael. Yeah, go on. You could argue that it was a good idea because... It's very easy for us in our ivory towers to look back at the people of the past and said, you lads did that completely wrong. Yeah. But a lot of the time that the modern world that we live in, the, the idea of the way our modern society functions needs instant mass communication to be able to get these messages around quickly. And, you know, computers to be able to centralize data collection and um, centralize running a government. It's all big, Michael. Uh, it's all it's all modern stuff then and in the olden days a feudal system it's it's kind of almost a reflection of how humans tend to organize themselves anyway yeah all right um so i'm not one to look back on history and say monarchy was bad because you are not michael it's we... one of the worst things about you and it's why you're not allowed to come to the fenian fan club it's yeah because it no i mean i i think by the time of 1916 and our gang it, it was obvious that we don't didn't live in a in a world that was monarchy anymore. You're not in our gang. Really. You're not in our gang. You bloody moderate. Not, Get out of here. Yeah, not the, not that specific gang. <laughs> not the one you were talking about. <laughs> There's a name for that gang, Ben. Yeah, it's it used not to be great. banned. Um, ben, but by the time the modern world rolls around, yes, there's no need for them anymore. They are a largely defunct but, institution. Exactly. Yeah. So they're kind of. But the worlds that we're seeing. Um, they they might not be because you know, it's it's it was a very different society and monarchy got us 
partially got us to where we are. So I, I would never look back on history and go, we shouldn't have had kings and queens because it, you know, it worked to get us to the most developed modern society in the world. You also but, can't change time, Michael. <laughs> Does it can't, work? Can't, well, you can't. Well, you can in you can in the Marvel universe. They could go back in time and kick out Black Bolt. They probably should have. Stop putting people in the mines just because they're ugly. You're not allowed to do that. No more mines, Black Bolt. And, and <laughs> it's fucking mad. Benjamin, what other royals are they? Um, uh, there's uh, there's the Windsors over in the UK. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, the Mount Battles, uh, yeah. There's King Philip of Spain. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> there's not real royals, Ben. Oh, Benjamin, sorry. One of the, one of the weirdest cinema going experiences I ever had was seeing the film Three Hundred in Thailand. <laughs> Do you know in Thailand you have to stand up for the the national anthem and the picture of the king before every movie? Do you? Yeah, yeah, very uncomfortable for me. That's very strange. I went to see one film in Thailand, Ben. What, just the one? Yeah, because I was going to get in trouble if I, if I kept going. Mm -hmm. mm. What do you mean you were going to get in trouble if you kept going? I'm not a big fan of standing up for national anthems, Ben, or... Oh, because you don't like being brainwashed, you know. Michael? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fair. Ah, go on, Sherlock, let's wrap it up. Are we wrapping it up? It's bloody... We're over an hour and ten minutes. Oh, Christ, Michael. Uh, come here to time? me. Um, that, that's it from us, ladies and gentlemen. Who are your favourite monarchs? No, I'm just kidding. Don't send us that. I don't want to know. Um, in fiction. <laughs> in fiction, sure. <laughs> Who are the worst Not royal real families? Life. Benjamin, imagine one of our... Imagine if one of our loyal supporters or, or listeners on, on Patreon or discord texas and said my favorite royal is unironically prince andrew <laughs> the, we're uh, gonna uh -oh. boot him from the patreon <laughs> <laughs> who's the worst royal in fiction uh for in you fiction, ladies yeah. and gentlemen uh give us a shout in a couple of different places you can find us on the interwebs at www.shomrabeog.com s-e-o-m-r-a-b-e-a-g.com it means tiny room in irish it does indeed you can find us on instagram at your luxury listen podcast it means Sherlock should listen in English. You can find us on Twitter at Listenshire. Yep, you can. But ladies and gentlemen, the best place to come to court and have a chat with us is yep. up on that Discord, baby. Hop up on it. We have two channels. We have one channel for the sexy and beautiful people and we have another channel for the uggos. It's called The Minds. It's called The Minds. <laughs> if you haven't had enough of us this week, ladies and gentlemen, you can tune in on Wednesday where we'll be taking a look at Fantastic Four Full Circle by Alex Ross, the brand new comic uh, from Marvel on our other podcast, Collecting Issues, the bi-weekly comic book, 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 book club. club. Book club, yeah, the bi-weekly comic book, book club. Very good. All right, that's it from us. Oh, hell! Long live the king is dead. Long live the king. Long live the dead king. Yes, very good. <laughs>